Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about creating a black and white photograph inside of Lightroom. By that I mean taking a colour photograph and turning it into a black and white photograph. I'm going to use two methods, the one is recommended by Lightroom and I'm going to use a plugin from a company called NIK Nick by Google. They're owned by Google and the plugin is called Silver FX Pro, E-F-E-X. Now it ships with six other plugins, so it's going to cost you 95 UK pounds or 139 US dollars. So it's quite expensive, but for Silver Effects Pro alone, I would pay that price. I'm not going to cover the other plugins, I'm just interested in Silver Effects Pro. Let's get started. Right, here's my image. I'm going to turn into black and white. Now, how do I know this is going to work? Well, I've done it previously, but I also know it's going to work because it has strong lines, plenty of detail in the grass. The hut stands out really well. There's a lot of contrast between the sky and the foreground, etc. So I know it's going to work. Not every image lends itself into being turned into black and white. And that's the first lesson you'll learn. Uh, a milky water shot with the sunset in the background doesn't work. It's more about colour that than structure. So you need structure, you need detail, and you need something that's going to be quite moody. So this would can be turned into a moody image because basically it was a passing rain shower. So I know it's going to work. Right. Now we're going to use the Lightroom method for turning this into a black and white first off. I'm going to go to the preferences to see if there's anything at all that might affect how this image is turned into black and white. There's one thing under presets under default developed settings apply auto mix when first converting to black and white and all that means is it's like auto tone etc is lightroom will do the best job it's, it can in turning that image into black and white now there's a complex algorithm or complex mathematics behind this but lightroom doesn't have a pair of eyes so i can almost guarantee you're going to move the sliders in the black and white panel after you've pressed auto, but it does put you kind of in the right place. Right, let's get started. I want to get one thing out of the way straight off, and that's the black and white panel inside the basic panel. Now, you can develop the whole image in black and white or flip between color and black and white. What I would say to you, and it's what Adobe will say to you as well, is you're better off developing in color then coming down to the black and white panel. You'll have far greater control because seeing the image in color gives you more scope to work with the image. I'm not saying you can't use the black and white facility here, but it isn't the best way to work. But if you want to go down that route of developing the image from this method, there's nothing wrong with it. So let's take it back to color. Now I've developed this image already in color. What I need to do is come down to the black and white panel. Auto is available to me because I've played around with this image already. I've played around the sliders. So that having that ticked hasn't worked on this occasion. But if I do this and then click on auto, Auto is greyed out, and that's what I'd normally see if I had it ticked in preferences, like so. So, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. So, let's start playing around. Now, it's based on the luminosity of the underlying colours. So, assume this grass is mainly green. If I drag the green slider to the right, it becomes more brighter, basically. So, you can see it working there. There's also a lot of yellow in that grass, and this is the reason you should use the target adjustment tool here, because it gives you far greater control. So I'm going to click on auto again. I'm going to click on the target adjustment tool. Now how it works is where you click and drag down will make it darker, where you click and drag up will make it brighter. The unfortunate thing is you do lose the cursor once you've clicked. So if I want to make that grass brighter, I click and drag up. It's becoming brighter. Now, it's not a local adjustment as such because you can see the whole of the grass being made brighter because they sh often share the same color value. So if there was a green bit in the sky, let's say, oh, that would also be made brighter. So it's not strictly a local adjustment it's a global adjustment with far greater control than moving the sliders alone because if you move these sliders around you'll see in that grass there's just as much yellow as there is green so you wouldn't know that by looking at it so that's the reason you use the target adjustment tool as i said there's nothing stopping you from moving the sliders if you want but this is the better method now i don't really want to do too much more to that image i think that's quite fine anyway that's really 
black and white done inside of Lightroom. But what I will say to you is you can split tone and color these images if you want to. Now, I don't often do this, but if you want to put a sepia tone into the highlights and into the shadows, you can do the same thing and really muck around. I can put blue into the highlights, etc., um, and play around with the sliders. You, you get the idea, guys. Now, I'm going to turn that off by dropping the switch. So you can turn anything off on a panel by dropping the switch. You can also add in stuff like um, uh, vignetting, um, which can work really well on black and white images. Introduce a lot of grain into the image as well and often works very well. I'm not against what I see on the screen already. So you can do these things and you can play around with dehaze and do all sorts of things. But what I will say to you now is if you want total control, you have to use a plugin. And the plugin I use is Silver FX Pro. The reason I use it is because I did my research and saw that most photographers around the world, and I include professional photographers in this, use Silver FX Pro. It does ship with six other plugins, but for $139 US dollars and 95 UK pounds, it's a bargain in my opinion, especially when you have these six other plugins. I would probably pay £100 just for Silver FX Pro, to be honest with you. I think it's fantastic value for money. Let's go up into the preferences and see if there's anything in the preferences that's going to affect our edit in Silver FX Pro. Let's go to external editing. The top bit's about Photoshop. The next bit is about the plugins I have. Now I've got Silver FX Pro showing up. The first three drop downs are defaults TIFF, Pro Photo RGB, and 16 bits. They're all defaults. Don't change them. And if you do, you'll be warned why you shouldn't change them. But it does um, recommend you stay with TIFF, Profoto RGB and 16 bits. Resolution is about print. Now, uh, 300 is 300 pixels per inch. Now, that's seen as the benchmark for quality images. So having one or 300 there doesn't really matter when you're on the screen. It's all about print. And if you put one there and at a later date want to turn it back to 300 PPI, you can because it's the image size that really counts. Resolution in this context is a bit of metadata telling a printer how to print the image. But if it's not the right size, it won't print it 300 PPI. But Adobe don't allow you to break the rules. So what I'm saying is here, it doesn't matter one bit what you put there, especially if you're only working on screen. So I put 300 there to be on the safe side and to stop me having to put it back into the export dialog box uh, when I export it from Photoshop or Lightroom. Anyway, that said, compression none, that's about TIFF. Stack with original, all that means is when you save it in Silver FX Pro or come back into Lightroom, stacked with the original image, i.e. Groot with the original image, one of two, two or three, whatever. Custom settings here is about file names. And what Silver FX Pro will do is put the word edit into the image when it brings it back in. Now, if you do it five times, you'll have five edits in the file names. So it can be cumbersome, but I don't mind it because at least it tells me that I've done it five times and I stay with those custom settings that shipped with Silver Effects Pro. Right, let's not waste any time anymore. And one thing I am going to do, actually, I'm going to turn it back into a... I'm going to turn off those effects because I don't want those effects when I go into Silver Effects Pro. I'm going to turn it back into a color image as well. So let's go into uh, Silver FX Pro. Now, if you took it in as black and white, I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'm not going to take a black and white image in to be turned into black and white, but it might not cause any problems, but I think it's better off you start with color, but I can't be 100% sure if it matters if you start with a black and white image or a color image. Photo edit in Silver FX Pro. Alt or Option, Command or Control, E. Now this takes a while. I've got quite a fast system here, so it even takes 30 seconds on mine. The only choice you've got is edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Yes, you would want to do that even if you had a choice because why have you developed the image? This would normally be like this, but when you click it, it tells you the same things that you saw in the preferences. You can change the settings. Let's click on edit and let's get started. As I said, it's going to take about 30 seconds, so I'm gonna to have to chop a bit of this out. Right, here we are. Silver FX Pro is started up. Let's make it full screen. On the left, you have 38 presets. You can narrow them down by modern, etc. 
and I'm not going to run for every preset. I'm going to click on one here to show you what happens. It will change. But what I'm going to do is click on modern because I know the preset I like is here somewhere. I think it's full dynamic smooth. Now it's a little bit too dark. So over to the right, global adjustments, just make it slightly brighter. Maybe bring up the contrast a little bit more and take the brightness down a tiny bit. Structure is about clarity, it's about mid-tone sharpness. Uh, it's like the clarity slider inside Lightroom. So if you drag it up, it gives it more structure, it makes it more detailed, makes it a bit more punchy. Now, I don't want to go over the top. Now, you can protect the shadows, etc., etc. So my favorite tool is the control points. Now, I want to make that brighter. So you click on control point, come and click on the image. If you click on the yellow bit, you'll see the area you're going to affect. You can move it around. You have three sliders, brightness, contrast, and structure. So I'm going to make it brighter, just in that area there. Probably a bit too bright, that's so going to bring it down a tiny bit. Um, bring up the contrast to make it a bit more interesting and whack up the structure because it's in the foreground. I want it to be quite sort of funky, sharp, for want of a better word. Right. I'll put another one on the hut because the hut's far too dark. See the extent of the um, circle. It's far too large. Move it around a bit. Just a bit like that. A um, bit too much there, but it's a circle. I don't believe it's got any feather on it, so you've got to be careful. Contrast and just a tiny bit of structure, make the hut stand out a little bit more. In fact, a tiny bit more of brightness, I would say, would work. Click on the yellow dot, and that would be it. Sky, in my opinion, is far too bright. Uh, it wasn't bright when I saw it in colour in Lightroom, but it is bright now, so I need to change it around. So it doesn't matter what preset you play with. I probably could have found a preset that's better than this, but I don't have the time to really sort of play around too much. I might bring the structure up a little bit. Um, and I might make it wider, slightly, make its effect slightly broader there. I know I'm, I'm, I'm sort of digressing into those huts there, but I might make it into those boats, I should say. I just want to bring the brightness down a bit more. Uh, that's about it. As I said, I might take the contrast down. I don't want it too contrasty either. I'm probably bring the structure down to help it sort of not stand out too much. I want subtlety. Now, there's so much more I can do with this image here. I can put a color filter on. That's not a color overlay as such. Let's say you had a black and white camera with black and white film in it. It's like putting a color filter over that uh, lens. So if I click on orange, let's say, that's the effect of an orange filter on a black and white film, let's say. So I can command or control Z on that. Um, under that, you've got details. You can change the hue of stuff, the strength. There's so much here, guys, honestly. Film types, you can pick so many different film types. I play around with the grain of the film type, sensitivity of the colors. Um, you can play around with levels and curves. Uh, toning, that's about adding a color, so you can add a color in, much like you did with split toning, but you can have far more subtlety than you have with split toning, and far more choices. And then you just open this up and start playing around. Um, I don't personally like um, adding these type of adjustments, so I'm gonna untick it. I think that kind of colouring of black and white images is a bit dated now, but that's not to say it won't come back. Now, there's so much more I could do here, guys, honestly. I've had to take that back on now, actually, and um, try and find something neutral. That's the neutral one there. Let's show you, show you something else. Vignette, you can put vignettes on it. You can burn the edges off, um, soft one, soft two. You can put a border on. Let's pick a border. You get the idea, guys. There's so much you can do. When you untwirl these things, you can really play around. It is very, very powerful indeed. You know, in Photoshop, you could probably reach this point, but not as quick as you can with Silver FX Pro. And Lightroom is a little bit limited and a bit difficult to work in with black and white sometimes. Um, as I said, don't use the black and white facility in the basic panel, I would say developing color. You need to use the black and white panel and move the color sliders around using the target adjustment tool. Then as a course is the creme de la creme, which is Silver FX Pro, 95 UK pounds, 139 US dollars and roughly that in euros, I should imagine. That's it guys, I hope you got something from this. Black and white isn't difficult, pick your image well. And if you pick a lemon of an image, maybe Silver FX Pro might be able to help you. So, you know, don't rule out any image, but have an image with strong lines, strong textures and strong shapes and it's going to work. Especially street photography and people for, uh, portraits, definitely going to work. That's it guys.